Let's say you die, physically, physical body dies. Where do you go? Depending on your condition. <laughs> yes, it depends. Like, totally like on that. Depending on your level of vibration, you link with a similar vibration. But what's this vibration? Well, an energy or a. What is it really? An awareness. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Simplify it. Emotion. Goes to simple, simple. Control, control, control. It's about how much love you have, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You think about it. Every terminology of light or of vibration, right? You hear these people call themselves light workers? Mm -hmm. right. Let your light shine between. What are we really talking about? We're talking love about. Love. So, where you go depends totally upon how much love you are reflecting in your soul. <coughs> now, it's not your definition of what love is, it's. Every, there are places in the spirit world, best place, I'm going to draw them linear, linear, linearly, right, as a, as a line, if you like, in the two-dimensional space, but in reality, they are multi-dimensional spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many of you think there's seven? Have you read any spiritual material? Most people have. Most people say there's seven. There's actually not seven. There's actually twenty-two. So far, none. Uh, current day mathematics using supercomputers can actually describe the existence of these dimensions. These, these dimensions are described mathematically currently. Um, up to a certain point, because the computational power to do it mathematically is, is quite high requirements. Let's look at what's happening with them. My, if my soul reflects love, then I will pass into a more loving dimension than if my soul reflects other emotions of hatred, envy, strife, jealousy, and so forth. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Now, there are two forms of progression in love. One form of progression is limited at the sixth sphere. So I'm going to draw a line across there, and I'm going to draw a little sort of dots down here. Bear in mind, these dimensions are not separated like the line down the middle. Right? I'm just representing it diagrammatically. There are two paths of progression. And the two paths of progression are called of progression are called the natural love path and the divine love path. So I need to define natural love and define divine love, yes? Natural love is the love that you emanate from your own soul that is totally under your control using your free will. Divine love is the love that God emanates from her soul and can give to you as an individual. Do you see the difference? One of these types of love is coming from within yourself. The other type of love is coming from God. You can develop If you develop in divine love, you will automatically have to develop in natural love as well. So the divine love path, if we can call it that, encompasses the natural love path of progression as well. Now, if you decide to be self-reliant, then you are going to automatically be on the natural love path of progression. Because to connect with God, you need to become... God reliant. If you are very intellectual and deny your emotions, you will remain on the natural love path. If you decide to become emotional, 
and focus on your emotions, you have a better chance of being on the divine life path. If you decide that you are God, you will be on the natural life path. Can you see why? How can you feel an emotion of love from a being external to yourself when you think you're that being? Can't, can you really? On this path you will say, I am God's child. So therefore we are all brothers and sisters. Okay. Can you start seeing a picture of what the two paths are of development? This, both paths involve the dirty word nowadays called morals. Yes, God does have morals that are in harmony with her love. And you will feel them at some point in your development. So if you think you can lie, steal and cheat on any of these paths, you will find you will not be able to get on any of the paths and you will find yourself in the first sphere in a state of stagnation until you work through those particular issues. Hey, Self-reliance self -reliance is when I only trust myself to determine truth. God-reliance is when I trust the relationship between myself and God to determine the truth. Can you see the difference between the two? You can see that most of the time we want to do that because we don't trust anybody external to ourselves. How many of you feel that you really trust somebody? Even your partner? Right? It's hard to trust, isn't it? How do you know for certain what they're going to do? And this is the thing, when you become God-reliant, you begin to trust that relationship because of the emotions that are exchanged between the two of you. Does everyone receive the same amount of love? No. It's totally dependent on desire. But that would be not equal. But no. But would just everybody equal amount of opportunity and love? You just filtered my answer through your emotions. <laughs> yeah? What did I actually say? I said no to what question? If everybody receives the same amount. Okay. And what did I say was the answer? It was Desire. based on? Desire. Desire. God is wanting to give all of us the same amount of love. Okay. But it depends on your desire to receive it as to how much you will receive. Okay. Free will. Because of your free will. God is not going to force you to receive more than you want. To do that would be breaking God's own laws, and she will never do that. She never breaks her own laws. Okay? Alright. So, on the divine love path, you can progress above the sixth sphere, and you can process infinitely. And just briefly, what happens on the seventh sphere, above the seventh sphere, is you become born again. Now you're not saying, oh, AJ, you're not born again. <laughs> The soul gets transformed from a human soul into a soul with so much divine love in it that it's actually a different type of creature with different attributes and qualities. And that is the moment you become immortal as well. Right. It's the transformation of the soul and that's why it's called born again or the new birth it's often referred to as in the spirit world. What does that feel like? Um, very hard to describe. There's a there's a book in the print in the uh, DVDs that I'm that I've got there. There's a book by Robert James Lees called The Gate of Heaven, and in that book he attempts to describe. It's a spirit writing this book. He attempts to describe the process that he went through when he went through the transition in the seventh to the eighth sphere. And my suggestion is have a read of the three books that he's written because he, he, he actually arrived in the spirit world in the second sphere and it describes all of the things he learnt from that time onwards. What was the title, sorry? Uh, Rob, the writer is Robert James Lees and the three books, the first one is called the, uh, Through the Mists, the second one is called The Life Elysian 
And the third one is called the gate of heaven. Will you reincarnate after the sphere? No. To reincarnate, you must go through a process on the 21st sphere. And the process at the 21st sphere is an amalgamation of the soul, recombining the soul into one. When you're in the 22nd sphere, you now may choose to reincarnate. So that's what you've done? You're the first one. I was the first one to ever do it. So the, the spirits in the spirit world know that you've done this? Yes. In the celestial spheres, yes. And what's their response? What do you mean, what is their response? <laughs> they would be happy, wouldn't they not? I'm allowed to make my own choices, aren't I? <laughs> What's the, what are you getting at? Well, I mean, are, are, they, are they curious about your experiences? Or, oh, or do, sure. they, do they want to learn from you? Or? Um, it depends what spirits you're talking to. Like, there are spirits in the sixth sphere who believe they can reincarnate without going through this process. And those particular spirits will never reincarnate as a result while they hold on to those beliefs. And I don't need to reincarnate. So there are many spirits in the 22nd sphere who don't want to come back to Earth and can you blame them? <laughs> really. Yeah. And then do you start them from level one again? What's the time? You start based on the emotional impressions of your parent state. So in my case, yes, I started back there. Mm -hmm. Why did you mean? Because I want to tell everybody the truth about their life. This stuff. Because of love. Is this the same as what you were saying before? Yes. I didn't know about the 21st fear and the soul union though, back then. So I didn't teach the soul union. I did know about soul ones, but I didn't know about the soul union. Can I just add a question there? Um, there's books by James Paget where Jesus um, channeled in 1914 to 1924, which are probably on that. Other They're all on the CDs. And too. that there. Um, explains that you tried to teach the teachings to us on earth through those books and the channelings in 1914, yeah. but it didn't uh, go like a fire through the earth, so... So quite a number who have returned wrote the messages that you can read that were written in 1914. And they're all on the CDs too, if you want. Okay. Amazing. So the soul needs to go through this soul union process, so I'll just write that down, that's what the spirits call it at that sphere, the soul union process, right? And it's the soul union process that allows the soul to recombine into one, and once the soul has recombined into one, then it has lots of choices available to it, far more than the half of the soul has. The half of the soul needs a body to have sensory input. Do you understand what I meant by that? So right now on earth, the reason why you've got a physical body is because you need this physical body to interact with the physical world so that your soul can actually absorb the experience. When you're in the spirit world, you will have your spirit body that you use. And to you, it will feel the same as your material body feels now. You can go up and hug another spirit, for example. Right? You even have sexual relationships in the spirit world. Does it feel as good? It feels, good. <laughs> it feels better. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It feels better. 